Since September 2021, Social Security changed how you create a My Social Security account. We'll show you how to do this step by step coming up next. Andy Stamis here with Medicare Mindset. The My Social Security account can do a lot of things, which we summarized in a previous video. But first, you need to set it up. Here's how you do it. You're looking at the main Social Security website at ssa.gov. To create an account, you'll need to first click the Sign In, Sign Up button at the top right. And then you'll select My Social Security Account here on the left. Here's where you can both create an account and log in to an existing one. But how you do it depends on when you created the account. For those who create an account before September 18th, 2021, you'll enter your username and password here to sign in. For everyone else, you will create an account or sign in down here. You now have to set up a login.gov or id.me account, which will then be connected to your Social Security account login. We're familiar with the login.gov process, so that's what you'll see here today. But one additional note, You'll see the option of use an activation code here at the bottom. The activation code is used when you need a special code from Social Security to create your account. As long as the account creation goes smoothly, we won't need to go that route. As far as information you'll need to create the account, an email address is definitely required. And if your spouse already has an SSA account, you should use a different email address to set up yours. Also, have your cell phone ready. There are two occasions where the system will send you a one-time code, once for login.gov and once for Social Security. Both of them give you the option of receiving a code via text or via an automated phone call. Lastly, you'll have the option to add more layers of verification to set up your account. This will be through your driver's license or government ID, the last eight digits of a credit card in your name, figures from your Social Security benefit statement, tax form 1040, or 1040 Schedule SE for self-employed folks. Remember, this part is optional. Going this route adds more complexity, setting up your account, and more possibilities for errors and problems. In our example, we will skip this option. Another note, if you encounter errors along the way, the system will alert you where to make corrections. This could happen during the login.gov account creation process, or later when you're entering your contact information for the Social Security Administration. It's possible that no matter what you do, no matter how accurate you think your information is, the system might not accept it. There may be mismatched data on file with Social Security, like the wrong date of birth, a misspelled first or last name, or something else that doesn't match up with your credit file. Social Security does verify information through the credit reporting agencies in the final part of the account creation process. If you can't seem to get anywhere, contact Social Security at 800 772 1213. They can help you gain access by mailing you an activation code. You would then use that code to proceed with your account creation, which we mentioned earlier. Okay, back to the account creation. Click the Create an Account button first. Enter your email address. Remember, it's best to use an email address unique to you, not another family member's email. Choose your language. Check the box to agree to login.gov's terms, and then click Submit. Now the system alerts you that an email has been sent to your email address. The email will come from no reply at login.gov with the subject line of Confirm Your Email. Open the message and click the blue button that says Confirm Your Email Address. This will now take you back to the account creation process where it asks you to create a password. You'll need to create a strong password with at least 12 characters. Be sure to make note of your password, as this will be how you log into the account in the future. Your username will be your email address, and your password will be what you just created in this step. Click the blue Continue button to proceed. This next step is very important, as it sets up your two-step verification. Essentially, every time you log into your account with your username and password, you will receive a unique code to gain access. There are all sorts of options you'll need to decide what's best for your comfort level. In our example, we're choosing the phone option, which sends you a text message or calls you with the code. Click the blue Continue button to proceed. The next page asks for your cell phone number. Enter it here, 
select text message or phone call to get the code, and click the Send Code button. You will receive the code usually within seconds or maybe a minute. Enter the code here and click Submit. Now the page confirms that you're connecting your login.gov account to SSA, the Social Security Administration. Click Agree and Continue at the bottom. You will then need to review the Terms of Service, click the box, and select Next to proceed. You're almost done. This page is where you'll enter your contact information. It's important you enter your legal name as it's shown on your Social Security card. If you have a middle name, you can just enter your middle initial. Your Social Security number is next. You can enter it with or without dashes. Click the little eye icon to make sure the numbers you entered are correct. Then go ahead and enter your date of birth, home address, and your phone number. Click the blue Next button to continue. If there are errors, the system will let you know where to make corrections. If all is good, you'll be taken to the page I alluded to early on, where you can add an extra level of security to set up your account. We are going to bypass this and choose the first option, No thanks, I don't want to add extra security at this time, and then click Next. All right, now here is where you'll get yet another code to officially access your account, just as you'll do every time you log into your Social Security account. You have the option of receiving a text message or a phone call. We will choose the text option again and click Next. The code should arrive pretty quickly, but the system says it can take up to two minutes to arrive. Enter the code here and then click Submit Activation Code. Then proceed by clicking Next here, and then the last page is agreeing to Social Security's Terms of Service. Click the box and the Next button. Now you are officially in. This particular account we created today is for someone who is not yet eligible for Medicare and not receiving any Social Security benefits. So the dashboard and options might be different than what your account looks like. Essentially, once you start receiving Social Security and or Medicare benefits, the dashboard and options are a little different. We have another video that goes into detail on how to understand your Social Security account dashboard and use some of its features. Just to name a few, you can access your benefit statement, enroll in Medicare and or Social Security, get your Medicare number and Part A and Part B start dates, request a replacement Medicare or Social Security card, and more. That video is linked in the description below. So it's a bit of a process, but in the end, you'll benefit from having this online access. Well, thanks for watching, and please check out our other videos and tips.